How do you steal dope? Well, I didn't steal dope. I stole money. How? Um, he wasn't one of those dealers. He was a guy that connected with my ex at the time. Mm -hmm. She left me and hooked up with this guy who also sold an abundance of herb weed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, she kicked me out of the house. He moved in. I knew how to break into the house. My fingerprints were all throughout the house. Uh, so I broke in one day and I'm stealing all this, the, any valuables. <laughs> I look over and I'm about to leave. I can't really find any money. And there's a, a, a water jug cooler full of quarters. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck yeah. I grab a, a pillowcase and I fucking dumped all. Think about how heavy that heavy as fuck. Yeah. I put all the quarters in this pillowcase. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and this, this house is literally in little Italy, right? Like not even a block and a half from where my mother lives. Mm. And, um, I steal all the quarters in a pillowcase and like Santa Claus going down the fire escape. I'm smoking his bag. <laughs> but before I leave, I see this really expensive like liquor cylinder. And I just happen to think, like, and I open it up and there's $10,000 in there. And, and it, each wrap a thousand is wrapped with like a $2 bill, some weird like yeah. fucking thing. And I steal the 10 G's and, and I'm going to the coin star at the Safeway. Now, now how do you feel right now? Just I, oh, it, dude. on, on cl floating. Dude, there I've never been more sure and confident about my future. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's like one of those dude. rare moments where yeah. I'm so optimistic that, <laughs> dude, yeah. Because I, I, I imagine better. when you're a you're a desperate junkie yeah. that your whole life revolves around getting heroin. The the you're getting the money, getting the money for the fix has got to be almost as good as getting Dude, well. I, there were days where I'd be so sick, right? I'm in that fetal position. I can't move. I can't, and, and I have no option or, or sure shots to come up with money. And all of a sudden someone comes through with money. And as soon as I haven't even left the house, but as soon as that $10 bill hits my hand, I'm instantaneously better. Yeah. It's so mind over matter yeah. Yeah. before I couldn't even think of moving. Now I'm fucking dancing. I'm fucking up. I'm yeah. Ready. Yeah. Just cause I know things are going to be right, but I have the 10 G's. I, I, I stuff it in my shoes. So I'm literally walking five and five to, on 10 G's. And I got this fucking pill and it's in quarters. broad daylight. Right. I, I went to this row, row home in little Italy and now it's a small little area and, and everyone kind of knows what's going on. Yeah. It's a tight knit area. So I, I'm rushing to the the Safeway in Canton. It's this area in Baltimore. And I'm going to the coin star to fucking get rid of the coins. And I'm at this major intersection. And all of a sudden I'm crossing the goddamn pillowcase bursts. <laughs> quarters every fucking where. <laughs> Broad daylight. Wow. I hurry up. I take my shirt off. I fucking, the quarters. I go do what I'm doing. But then I told you my mother lives in Little Italy, which is where this house was. Yeah. And next to Little Italy is a place called Perkins Projects. No man's land. You don't fucking go back there. But I get the 10 G's. I got the money from the quarters. It's all in a, like an eight block radius. I then go to Perkins Projects to this lady's house I know. She lets me live in that house. I stay there for about three weeks. I run through this 10 G's. 10 G's were the smack. Yeah, go coke on. and smack. Wow. I'm paying for myself and the three or four other people yeah. in this house. The dope boys come to the house every morning. I don't even leave. I'm not even two blocks from where I just broke into this house and stole all this. Wow. Um, How many places in Baltimore do you think are like that? Just either abandoned or semi-abandoned and it's just groups of junkies in there. So many. So many, so, right? So, so many. So many. Why, why, what is it about Baltimore that's so uh, privy to heroin? I don't know. I, I wish I had the answer. Yeah. I mean. Is it, is it, but, but. Yeah, I was going to say the port. It's a port, but I don't even think heroin comes through there anymore like it, like it did. I, I think what, heroin was just a thing for a while because yeah. now it's kind of transitioning to meth. Oh, and a lot of heroin addicts are becoming meth addicts. Why is it? Why are they choose, going from an opioid to the most extreme? It's, upper? it's so crazy. I, I don't. I don't. Probably know. because it's so available and it's pretty cheap. I know guys Maybe? that have kicked their heroin habit with meth. Wow. It, would you Would you ever recommend that? No, no. I, I didn't. I did meth twice, and I, I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I much prefer coke. Yeah. But no, I, I, I didn't want to be like hypersensitive and alert to how shitty my surroundings yeah. were. I'd rather fucking shoot dope and nod out. Right, right. Which right. the irony is that my whole life I had this humongous tattoo that says Carpe Diem, seize the day, and I did the exact opposite. Yeah. I literally tried to sleep through every fucking day of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. And you did for, I mean, it was like you were oh. asleep. I came to and I was really behind in the ways of modern society. Well, I think that's why like- when you first get clean, like, you know, you, you're washing dishes, it's like a movie, dude. Totally. It's like you're, you're washing dishes and then you open a bank account straight up. You're, you're being reborn. 
Yeah. You know, it's like you're I mean, teaching how to walk. I, but again. I was so disconnected from reality after that treatment center being in that sober living house, I was washing the dishes at this diner, Marianne's and I had this black outfit on, uh, it was the, 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 the attire. Yeah. And I, I didn't know how to like wash clothes. It wasn't something I did. And I would wash these clothes and they would always come out bleached and I didn't know why. And, and one day, one of the guys that lived in the house with me walked past and he saw that I was using dishwashing detergent to do my laundry, uh, but I was so disconnected from yeah. reality. I didn't know. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's where I was at. It's mentally. a woman's job anyways. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, okay. So you got, somebody puts a hit You're out insane. on you. So oh, it gets even better, dude. It gets even better. So, so I'm in Perkins projects. I run through the 10 G's. Are you hear gunshots in these projects? You, like, yeah, totally. Yeah. That's not abnormal. God, that's um, crazy. Word gets out that I may have stolen the money, but no one really knows. I'm still in love and heartbroken over my ex that is now with the new guy who I stole the money from. Yeah. So I'm like the the fucking yeah. broken yep. hearted lover mm -hmm. the, and my addiction. I'm just, life is bad. Yep. So I, I, ironically enough, the same 7-Eleven I put the 50 cents in at the payphone to call Bam, I went back and used that payphone to call her. Cause I'm like almost out of money. The realization yeah. that that 10 G is about to be gone. I think mm -hmm. I had like a hundred bucks left. Yeah. I call her, I'm heartbroken. I just need to hear a familiar voice. Yeah. Kind of like an old school Lionel Richie fucking love ballad. Yeah. And, and I call her and she recognized the number Word got out that like I stole it. They rush in a the car, they come up and he catches me and he beats me up real quick, but I get away. And uh, I had like the hundred bucks. He takes the hundred bucks. I now have no money. I just went on a fucking bender with this 10 G's shooting more dope than you could think imagine. Like, I mean, like if he was a gangster, he would have shot you right totally. there. But it was just kind of so quick spur of the moment. Right, and I'm like right. a fucking Baltimore city rat at this point. I yeah. can kind of slither around. Totally. And, um, so I get away, but my buddy, he buys me, uh, a, a one way Greyhound bus ticket from Baltimore to Crested Butte, Gunnison, Colorado. Um, which is like the furthest part yeah. of Colorado you can get like way North, I think is geography's not my thing, but geography's not my thing, but so far up. Uh, and I, I do a, a seven day bus ride with no, because he's now put this hit out on me. Right. These people, right. these people are like legit coming to deal with yeah. me and there's a, a bounty on my head and I jump on this Greyhound seven days on a Greyhound bus ride, no money in my pocket. Um, ill detoxing. I'm, I'm stealing from stops to eat along the way. I meet up, I'm in the back with this, I, I'm sitting next to like this fucking, the, tr the, the bathroom in the back, the dirty part yeah, of the house. Sure. And I hook up with this like really heavy set black chick at one point. <laughs> like she's battling her demons. Yeah. I'm clearly battling mine. We're fucking two ships crossing in the night. Hooking and we up like, in the back of a gray I mean, bus. literally the Already back. Already the dirtiest part of America. Right, right next to oh. the, I mean the last seat, yeah. like fucking yeah. my, foots in the fucking toilet as I'm banging this broad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I make it to Gunnison, Colorado. I'm looking for heroin. I can't find any heroin there. It's a, it's a ski town. So they love to do blow and like right. party. Right. I can't find heroin. I get a job at this restaurant called the last steep and I'm washing dishes yeah. and I meet this fucking Mexican guy there. And one day he gets a script of volumes filled and I'm like, Fuck yeah, I buy the whole script. I eat the whole goddamn script. No, I eat like 15 of them right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. And this is a little ski town. There's one road up the mountain, one road out, down, and there's a hitching post. There's one gas oh, station wow. in the town. There's apartments above the gas station, like two cops that patrol it. Yeah. Really nice yeah. property. And uh, I eat all these Valium. I go to the hitching post. I'm going to try to get to my place on the mountain, and I get cold. And I look at the gas station, and I'm freezing and I, I don't really remember this, but I grab a, 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 a brick and I throw it through the gas station window. What I do remember, I don't remember doing that, but I remember the alarm going off. And I remember looking up at the apartments above and people coming out, looking over, staring down. I go into this gas station. I steal cigarettes, uh, money, beer, and Mentos. I don't even eat candy, but and I, this is from the incident yeah. report. So I, I'm, <laughs> oh, so, we know so I, okay. I then, I then go back to the hitching post and I start to hitch and the alarm's still sounding. I remember looking, people were there. I'm cold. I'm getting colder. I'm like, dude, I might as well go get more shit. And I remember walking back. That's it. Fade to black. Some hours later, I'm nudged awake and, and these police officers surrounding me and they said, son, did you break into the gas station? I said, officer, what the fuck are you talking about? I've been in my bed all night. Like you fucking idiot. You're covered in glass in the gas station. 